So the trail from the cable cars over to the glacier follows this front edge of the valley. Across the, across the way are those aguilles, aguilles de rouge, the natural area. Um, Today I'm sitting up above the face of the Glace de Longentier. And um, this is a glacier that starts up where Switzerland, Italy, and France all come together and has been coming down the valley. And uh, a hike from uh, La Grande Montée allows you to come up here and get a nice view of the glacier, the face of the glacier. So let's take a look. Okay, so there's the face of the glacier and it's been calving slowly, which means rocks, keep, rocks and ice keep breaking away from the front and falling down this valley. And uh, that's very typical of the front of glaciers, glaciers that are retreating and glaciers that are advancing both have that feature. But I think what's interesting is if we look at the cliffs on the far side, we see how smooth the rocks have been made where the glacier has come through and carved out this valley. All the way down the valley, you can see that same carving feature. Okay. Now, of course, the carving of the valley can be done by ice, but it's better done by um, the rocks that are embedded in the ice. Up above is La Guille de Argentière, which either it is the name of the, uh, it gives its name to the glacier or the glacier gives its name to Ed. But as I said, it starts way up here on the border where Italy, France, and Switzerland come together. That mountain, which is Mount Ducat. And uh, the glacier starts up there, and then it comes down and works its way down through this valley. Okay. But actually, what I really like to talk about is not the glacier itself, but those hillsides across the way. So those hillsides, the French refer to as alpine meadows. And if they're not too steep, they bring their cows and their goats up here in the summertime so that they can make cheese, graze their livestock and make cheese. But when we get close, we find out that it's mostly shrubs, things like um, the alpine rose, the rhododendron that grows up here, and forbs, not kind of grasslands like we might expect. And um, so these um, alpine meadows are full of wildflowers, many of the same types of wildflowers that we might see back even at home in the United States. There's something interesting about these plants and uh, I'd like to share something about them with you. And so I'm going to pick a plant and uh, right down here in front of me I have some hawkweed, okay? And we see hawkweed at home in Massachusetts and in the United States. Um, and up here at this elevation, like many plants, um, because of the harsh winters, these plants have an ex extensive underground root system or underground stem like a rhizome to protect themselves. And they tend to be perennial plants, okay? The pot. As you go further down elevation, like down to the levels of places like Geneva, you might still find hawkweed, 
But at that point, you'd find it as an annual, a plant that is going to put all its energy into producing seed. The seed then falls away, or overwinters, the plant dies back, and uh, the seeds produce new plants in the, the spring. But because of the harsh weather up here, the chances of finding a pollinator, getting the pollen transferred from one plant to another, it's a pretty risky thing. And so a lot of plants at higher elevation have become perennials, um, relying on stored energy from year to year so that occasionally plants can uh, find a pollinator in the many years that they might live. All right, from the face of La Glace de l'Andre Le Terre, um, I'm Tom for Two Naturalists.